Hello, this is Cuckoo. This is Keith McMillan K Mix, uh, digital mixer, uh, digital audio interface, and uh, meter controller. This is a Mac computer, and this is Cuckoo. So I just want to show you how it works with a computer and try to be as efficient as possible, but it's quite difficult because there's a lot of things you could do. So let's get it right away. This is not powered right now, but I put two uh, USB cables in it. One USB cable, ah, <laughs> one USB cable is right here and it's supposed to be connecting to the computer. The other one is going to the outlet because I want to show you something. If, if one is powering the K-Mix and the other one is connecting to different, uh, different stuff, you can do this. You can turn it on like this. It's on now and you can start mixing. And then, because it's already powered from another source, you can use this to connect to the computer like this. Oh. And it will be recognized right away and wow there we are this is the k-mix editor this is where you could do all the fancy uh rating and stuff and uh, what happened if i just remove it like that it's still on there's no glitch in the sound it's it's still on it's still in the same mode as we were so what if i put this into really high speed efficient usb3 hub well i got one over here it's the electron overhub it's designed to be high speed and to deliver at full speed on every port. It's powered now. So I wouldn't recommend really working in uh, over a hub, but let's see, uh, connecting it there. Yeah, it's up and running. So it does work. And just for the sake of demonstrating this, I'm going to keep it running through the Electron Over Hub just to see if it works, if I think it does. I've, I've done it a few times and it seems to work fine. So we've got eight channels in and eight channels out. This is 16 channels of audio. This is, um, uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. So I want to, I made a list actually to what to, to go through. Connect to computer and show the app. So we're not connected to the computer uh, through a hub and it seems to work. And what I want to show first is this app here. It's got different pages, channel strip uh, with all the channels and you, each and every channel has their own settings. It's like input trim rumble filter that can be turned on and off only from within the app. Uh, it's like a low, uh, very low cut, like 80 hertz or uh, yeah, very low, low cut. And then we've got an EQ, and here is much easier to navigate, I think, when you see it all connected, all collected on one little strap like this. And then we've got a compressor, a threshold ratio, make again attack release. We've got the gate right here, threshold gain reduction, uh, attack release, and we've got routing, uh, whether we want to send it to main, uh, what panning we want to send it basically in the auxiliary and main. When we click each of these channels, we can see the changes up here. And there is another thing here, fader group. Right now, when I'm panning one of them, either from here or from within the app, uh, they're separate, right? So if I assign a group to channel seven here and channel eight, they're both in group four now. If I start panning them now, they're hard linked. So they have the same value. And there is one, uh, if, you, if you're doing it from here, you can access, you can actually do it by number. You can press, you know, zero. You can do minus 0, 0,5 and then, yeah. So you, you can be pretty precise, but you can't be like, now it's minus 1.09. If I want minus 1.11, it jumps to 1.15. So there is like an incremental thing there going on. And there is this button over here called fine. If I press fine, I got fine tune control. I could do very, very small incremental changes here now. Uh, and yeah. 
So this is a nice thing. It, it's all, it also applies to rotaries. So if we're like uh, doing an EQ on any of these channels, I could, um, like for instance, let's see, which one is it? Yeah, yeah number one, I'll press number one here. Um, and let's check the EQ now. I'm changing the low, but it's, it might feel a bit uh, clumsy to, to have so much uh, incremental change on your finger. Then you can turn on fine mode and then you have much finer control. And this actually works as a rotary now. You could dial it several yeah, rounds. Okay, yeah, you could also, let's say I copy channel one to channel two. I could just be here, press command C and command V. I just copied the strip settings. Very simple. And well, what else? Yeah, this is chaotic. I should, I sh <laughs> sorry, very chaotic. Uh, I want to show you, you know, you mentioned, if I press stuff here, uh, if I press the different, there's nothing happening here, you know? When I select different things, there's nothing happening in the app. But if I do this, I go into the settings, there is this thing called Editor Plus Mixer View Linking Off. I turn it on, and now look what happens. If I select a uh, track here, it's also following my selections over here. So this is, this is a nice thing. Press the auxiliary, we go into auxiliary mode, main, again, auxiliary, yeah. Okay, so right now I've got uh, this synthesizer connected to, to, to this. I'm going to the trim just to check it. Yeah, so it's, it's the continuum. Later on, don't worry, later on I'm gonna record the actual audio coming in. Right now it's just a, from the microphone, just to showcase a, a few things, okay. So right now, I've hooked up, um, this delay in, in audio coming out here on auxiliary one, uh, port three, coming out there, and then it's going back in, in this green one, coming in in, in input number three. So I could go into auxiliary and send. Right now the sound that I'm working on is on channel seven and eight. So right here, I'm gonna turn on the VU just to, to see it. So if I go to uh, auxiliary one now, where, where, where it's all being sent, I'm now sending, let's see. And then I want to also receive it. Let's see, the green one is coming in here on number three. There's one thing I want to show you now. Uh, it's something to do with pre and post. So what does it mean? It means that um, right now the main mix is, is gained a little bit. But if I turn off the main signal of the continuum, I'm still sending it. Now that is because the auxiliary one is in fact in pre mode. So auxiliary one is sending regardless of what the main volume is. It's using the input volume and it's just sending it out. So if I want to turn on the pre mode, I could do it from here. I could turn it to post and then it's first taking the master volume into account but if the master volume is zero it's not going to send anything yeah and I can also achieve this by pressing and holding these you see that the pre and pressing and holding post pressing and holding post so when I'm in auxiliary mode and every auxiliary mode has their own pre and post uh, uh, setting. So auxiliary one, press and hold, 
press and hold pre so right I'm gonna keep running it in pre main and if I'm out in the auxiliary uh, tab I could do stuff like this on the fly it could be being sent nothing I could, I could use it as an sort of a effect send uh, little strip here. So this this could be very useful. Um, okay. So on the and in the previous video, I also told you, told you about uh, how important it is to pay attention to the to the panning because now uh, the auxiliary outputs they are stereo couples. So there are three auxiliary outputs, but there are two outputs on every, there's like a right and left on every auxiliary. So uh, right now, um, let's check the panning on track seven. On the main, it's to the left, and on the auxiliary one, it's to the left, and auxiliary two and three are centered. I'll go here to the track number eight. There are pan to the right on the master and auxiliary one and the second ones are uh, centered at uh, the auxiliary two and three um, yeah so that means that anyone anything that's being sent out on auxiliary one here is going out on the left channel of auxiliary one which is port number three and so what happens if I send out on this one? Well, according to the panning, this one is pan to the right, which means in this auxiliary one uh, stereo couple, uh, the right channel is number four, three and four, left and right, left and right, left and right. Okay, and it just so happens to that I've connected this reverb to. Uh, to the other one so let's see and it's the the red one just here going in here taking it back in the blue cable it's right here on channel number four so just gonna mute this one and auxiliary Thank you. 
Yeah. So this is a way to creatively use it as an effect send, like actively deciding when to send to different uh, destinations. This could be very, very, very nifty. Uh, and, and these sliders are very responsive, very responsive. I don't have to, to touch them very hard. These are very good. I was going to return to the list now. Okay, explain pre and post input. So what is that? When I'm using it as a, an audio interface, I could decide whether or not I want to record the incoming signals or everything that's being mixed and being sent out. So effectively, I could record the incoming signals or the outgoing signals. So what this means is if I go to the USB tab here, the USB input has a pre or post mode. And if we hover over here, we can see pre equals for recording KMix input on the connected computer, post for recording KMix's output on the connected computer. So it might be a bit confusing at first because the incoming signals one through eight doesn't necessarily have to, anything to do with the outgoing signals one through eight. So I, I could, you know, we've got the reverb here and we've got that delay over there. Let's see. Okay, so right now we've got four channels going on. These are a stereo couple going through left and right. And, and you know, I could connect something else. I could connect um, this for instance, but it's connected to, yeah, these five and six. I could actually send this as well to the effects. Let's go to auxiliary one here. It's my effects channel. Well, first I'm going to check the panning five that's on the left on the right. Yeah, like that. Okay. I could do auxiliary one here. This is being sent to the effects. Five or six could also be sent to the effect and to the reverb. Or maybe just, just to the reverb maybe just a tad up there yeah so right now we have this mix of two stereo synthesizers and two effects coming in if I record this now head over to, to logic and um, so I create a, an input for for this uh, for the continuum like that And I create another one for uh, channel five and six, which is the the OP one. And I create uh, two mono for the effects. Let's see, and uh, two of them. Call them uh, three was the re the delay right, delay and reverb. Oh, sorry, this should be input um, three, four. This should be input three. Okay, so I, I test this. I audition the synthesizer now. Okay, we can see the effects responding, right? The OP1. So this way we could make a multi-track recording uh, uh, and recording like this, then you need to understand that the the USB the USB uh, input mode has to be in pre. That means you're recording the inputs right after they've been trimmed, but not necessarily after they've been uh, volume adjusted in the main mixer. It's recording the trimmed signal, and then you have to mix it. In the computer. So if I, I see, make a little recording here now. OK, 
Okay, so we've got... It's there. Um, so if I solo the OP one. Delay. Yeah, solo the reverb. Solo the continuum. Yeah, yeah, you get it. it it's a multi track recording. I recorded all these tracks now. But if I go into the USB post mode, that means that wherever these tracks are sent, right now in the main output, output one and two, um, all of these tracks are being sent there. On output three and four, they are kind of effect sends. So if I, if I record uh, output uh, three and four in, in post mode, I'm, I'm going to receive the send signals. Uh, because they're coming on, on these tracks. This has nothing to do with the input numbering. It has to do with however the mixes sound on each of these stereo couple. So right now, if I record um, channel one and two in post mode, that means, um, let's see, one and two. Let's make a new one. Uh, input one and two. Post recording. Um, if I now audition this one, let's see. It should. It should get all of this. The whole mix should should be recorded there. Let's try it. I'm just gonna delete this. Um, no, keep it. Just gonna mute it. So. So let's see. Now this could be good if you want to record a whole mix, of course, and also if you want to record a certain track with a certain parameter uh, hooked up to it. Or uh, like for instance, if I connect um, something like this, uh, a Sennheiser E3935, let's do that. Before you connect a microphone, make sure that the volume is, that the track is muted. You do that shift and the lower half of this it turns red because you never know what settings are on there. Okay. Trim signal. I could even check the trim signals. Hello, hello, before I even turn on the, the main mix, before I even hear it. So I could go to trim and see with the VU pressed, I could see the levels coming in there. A bit too hard. Something like that. Hey, hey, hey. So now I could go out in the, the main and yeah. So I could record this now. Now it, it's on channel one, right? So if I if I create a track here now. Uh, we just input channel one. Vocals. Record. Two. Hey, hey, you, you, you. Yeah, one, two, one, two. And before I record, just want to once again go to the USB tab. All the tracks are now in pre mode. That means what's coming in is the signal that's being recorded. So. If I go here again and record it, 
One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so the thing that was just recording was uh, the incoming signal, untreated. No EQ, no compressor, nothing. Just the incoming signal. And then, of course, you know, you're free to hook up any any EQ or anything uh, here afterwards. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And like that. But if we want to to work with the onboard effects, like the EQ and the compressor and the gate and the routing, to so let's see what's happening there. Right now, there is an EQ already on the track. And it, it looks like this. Dun, dun. If I also want to uh, use a compressor, dun, dun, dun. there is currently no way of visualizing the compressor, uh, so you have to listen to it. If I'd like to record this with the current effects, I need to decide where to send this. So I could set up, let's set up auxiliary three, output number um, eight, for instance. Right here, I go to auxiliary three, and well, first of all, I go to panning, and this is the right channel, number eight. I need to pan it to uh, the right on um, auxiliary three. So it's now being sent there when I do this. So right now, it's being sent out on an unconnected empty port. Nobody can hear this right now because it's not connected. So I'm sending it to auxiliary three, to port number eight. But when we do this, we go to the USB page and we enable channel eight, we set it to post mode. It means now we could spy on whatever goes on on these channels. I could connect, I could snap the audio coming out there. So if we go here again, and let's see. Right now we get a signal here that is indicating input. It's on channel input number one, and it's this muddy recording, right? One, two, with unchanged, untouched uh, microphone. So if I make another track with uh, input number eight, called book post effect. And do, 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 and record both of these now. We could compare them. So let's go. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hi, da -da, da -da, da. Okay, so let's sell the one of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the one with no effect. And this is the post one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Clearly has some EQ and some stuff on it. So, well, it's. A it might be a bit much to to get into at first, but after some time, you know, when you get to do this a couple of times, it it becomes natural. And even though the the idea is very logical, uh, it takes some time to digest it and to learn where it is and and how to do it. But that's just a matter of practicing. Yeah. Another thing I want to 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 make sure. This is more like a, a general tip uh, in terms of mixing. Uh, when you're mixing, don't max it out. Leave some headroom. Uh, uh, because if you're, if you're at the very top, there's nowhere to go from there. You can only go down. And if you want to swell and if you want to, to boom a little bit, there's nowhere to go. So don't mix it at a very high level. Mix it somewhere in the middle. And, and 
use the VUs because they're very, they're showing you what levels you are. Don't try to make everything reach the red zone. Be a little bit uh, less than that, especially when it comes to vocals. Be careful about because if you mix it too high, you might even get some distortion uh, without realizing it. If you're up in the red, if you're up here, if you're up too loud, you might get some distortion that maybe you won't even notice at first, but then later on in the process, you, you kind of, wait, wait a second, what's, what's going on here? And they get distortion. But, so don't mix it too, too loud. Be, be careful with the mixes. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to record the audio from the microphone and apply some uh, EQ and compressor. I press record here. We're recording. So everything we're doing now is uh, with an effect. Uh, so this is off. Uh, the equalizer is off. The rumble filter is off. Do, do. I'm gonna put the rumble filter on 80 to 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 I turn it off again on again du, du, du. so basically now when I turn up the rumble filter I uh, it gets less and less of the uh low fil low signals du. hey oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it there. So the equalizer, I'm gonna turn it on now. Du, 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 du. High frequency, high, high. I'm gonna pump it. High frequencies, high frequencies. Du, high frequencies are gone. Du, du, du. Du, 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 du. Mid frequency. So the mid frequency can actually go, uh, yeah, up in the high frequency uh, region. So this Q is the resonance w with, uh, what's it called? Yeah, the bandwidth. So if it's high, it means it's a very thin bandwidth and it's peaking. And if it's low, it's a very, very wide bandwidth, so it's it's uh, affecting a, a wide area. So I can't I can't see this, so I have to listen to it. Uh, so if there is a specific problematic. Perhaps this frequency should be killed. Hey, hey, low, 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 low. Do, 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 yeah, bass, bass, bass. Do, 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 So, with this setting, da, 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 with this setting, I'm going to turn on the compressor. Da, 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 da. So, I'm going to raise the makeup gain. And this is where you have to be careful because a lot of makeup gain will make the possibility of, of feedback much, much uh, worse. So, be careful. Da, 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 makeup gain. 
Hey, hey, the threshold, turning down the threshold on the compressor will make it, push it down in volume earlier in the volume. Hey, hey, and now, since we're recording this in post effect mode, we need to pay attention to the to the levels to the main levels, not the trim levels. Well, we had to check out the trim levels as well, because if the trim levels are distorting, then everyone, everything is going to be distorting later on in the chain. So, compressor. Ratio. Ratio. Hi, 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 hi. So having a slow attack is gonna still make the attack in your voice reach through before the attack and the compressor is compensating. If it's a very short, it's gonna take even your attack in your voice. And, and dampen it very fast. Dun, dun. Hey, oh. And release. Dun. Could be. Dun. Yeah. Okay, I've just been checking out this. This could be uh, something. Yeah. The gate. How about the gate? A low gate. If the gate is zero, all the sound is going to come through. Now I've set up a a gate that gonna cut up all the. Now I've set up a very high threshold, so all the sound lower than this threshold is gonna be. Cut out. Dun, dun. The attack time. Dun, 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 dun. Has to be quite fast in order to, to hear what you're doing. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. So it's too um too much. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. So, if I also send this to uh, uh, zero one, now we're recording not with the internal reverb but the reverb down here. Well, I'd say this is a demonstration of a microphone and a mixer. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is how the, how the compressor, the gate, the equalizer sounds. Yeah, this is what it sounds like. Okay, now I'm going to show you the surround, and I have no idea how to how to make you experience it. So I'm just gonna show you and you're gonna have to take my words for it. Now, first of all, I'm gonna save this preset. Preset and shift and this one because I'm storing it in this uh, slot L. Okay. So if I turn on surround uh, by pressing this button, now it looks a little bit different. So, what can I do in surround mode? Well, I could take any source, uh, any couple, stereo couple, or just a mono signal, and pan it around in different surround modes. So, uh, there, there is a quad mode where I'm using four speakers. There is an octo mode where I'm using all the eight outputs. And there is a 5.1 mode uh, which you can see the layout here where I'm 
using a kind of a cinematic uh, layer. There is a 7.1, which is even richer um, cinematic mixing. I'm going to use the quad mode now. Well, first of all, when I'm in this mode, I can't use the uh, the auxiliary sends uh, as freely as I did before. They are more kind of locked into this surround system. So I'm going to unplug the effects now. Oh, sorry. And I'm going to bring down the effect input. You can see this, right? You can see both these and and these circles here uh, and you can see the speakers one two three and four this is the layout of how you should put the speakers in your room in, for it to work so one and two is front left and right three and four is back right and left so i've got like speakers here I, you know i can't i can't record this in, in in uh, it's around so you have to take my word for it so I'm gonna hook up two of these sort of behind me so in quad mode I'm using uh, output one two three and four so the right uh, one behind me is number three so it's up here the left one and uh, behind me is number four so it's down here So now I've got four outputs, uh, the main one and two, and auxiliary one, uh, port three and four, according to this. Yeah, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, and in panning, I could start panning this around. So on my front left, front right, back right, back left. It is working. It is working. So now it's actually being sent to speaker four and uh, to speaker three, <laughs> speaker two, and speaker one. But I have to say, um, the sound is a bit wide actually. You can see on the interface right here that when I'm moving, you know, when I'm moving the the, the little dot here, the, the sound towards the speaker it gets more and more narrow uh, and on the interface it looks like it's totally narrow it looks like it's only coming from speaker number two now but actually the mix is pretty wide so not even speaker four is totally muted in this case so it's a very wide mix and it's a bit subtle the surround effect is very subtle in my opinion so it's closer to that edge and now it's certainly closer to that edge and now it's certainly closer to the edge behind me and so forth but it's not totally isolated you know it's not a very thin and I think it's just currently uh, this is the way it works and if you want to do more specific uh, sounds if you want something to appear just in that speaker and just in in that speaker it's you got much more control if you don't use around, but rather with auxiliary sense, you can make the exact uh, mixes that you want in every speaker and every output port. But the surround is a, a kind of a a very easy way to to navigate through many uh, many speakers in the surround system. It's it's very nice. I just wish it, it was a bit more narrow so I could be a bit more dramatic in my uh, in my surround mix. But, but maybe we'll see some updates. This is definitely something, uh, feedback that I'm providing to, to Keith McMillan, something that I would like to see. Just to have like an eight speaker surround system. And you could do something si so simple like that. And one thing you need to be absolutely clear about is that if you set up the surround system, it appears to be a global setting. So it doesn't appear to be saved per patch. Uh, so this is very important to know. 
So uh, I'm gonna go back into the normal mixing mode uh, like that. Yeah, okay. You could also use this as a MIDI controller simultaneously as you're mixing. Right now, we've got mixing. If you press shift and this diamond here, the left one is mix. This one is, these three others are three different MIDI modes. So I'm gonna show you how to use this. You can set it up here, MIDI. On the MIDI page, you can select what CC message and note message each of these uh, different things uh, is going to spit out. So these are CC messages. These are CC messages. Uh, these are notes. All the buttons are note values, except for the shift button because the shift is used uh, for global interaction let's just use the, the standard I could I could set it up I could change all of the CC values to suit my needs so there is bank one through two and three they could communicate on different MIDI channels and all of these have three values uh, so they could send out different CC values on each of these uh, banks so if I start up something, let's uh, start up something that speaks MIDI. Uh, VDMX, for instance. Yeah, new project. I don't know, put a video or something like that. So we've got this. Here's a little video. It's going to be in the back. This one. Okay. Where is this? Uh, yeah, this is the visuals program. I could do visuals and I could control things through MIDI. So right now, this is in MIDI bank number one, MIDI mode, so it's not controlling anything right now. But for instance, if I want layer background to show this, and I want, I want this one to control this layer, well, I could do this. I'm gonna learn like that. So, okay, now I'm controlling the opacity with this, yeah? And let's make another layer. Uh, action. And in the action, we've got, uh, for instance, I want these to listen to, to these buttons, yeah? Let's see if we could do that. Um, uh, one, two, three. Okay, so, so right now, I could fade in this background layer. I could fire off different videos here. And maybe I should e even take the action layer and learn this as well. So I now got a visuals, uh, <laughs> like a visual thing set up here. So yeah, fade in the stars, fade in the action layer, turn on different, uh, different videos. Yeah, I could do stuff like this and then back to, to the mixing, the sound mixing. get the idea so this is one way of using it you can hook it up to live Ableton live or to some software synthesizers or you know anything you'd like yeah I think it's pretty good now I want to show you uh, a little bit of a bonus I see this as a big bonus actually um, one thing is that this is currently running in Mac OS uh, X only it's because it's a class compliant USB audio 2 uh, it's currently not available on, on Windows but the uh, Keith Macmillan is working on a specific driver for Windows but right now it's only working on anything that's class compliant with USB audio 2 
and the Mac OS X platform is class compliant and it works straight out of the box. Nothing has to be installed, it just works. And since the iPad Pro is using the same kernel and, and drivers and everything, the iPad Pro is also uh, class compliant. And when I say the iPad Pro, uh, I say that specifically because the iPad Pro 12 inch has a USB 3 port. All the other iPads as of right now has USB 2. So you need the iPad Pro 12 inch, I think, to, to run this in full speed. But I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, the smaller iPads, uh, even though they have USB 2, the bandwidth is a bit crippled. So it's, uh, I don't think it works on, on the smaller iPads, I think. Maybe it does. I hope it does, but I don't think so. So let's try it out, see if it works. Does it really work? Okay, so here is the iPad Pro uh, 12 inch. And I'm gonna use this brand new USB 3 breakout cable for the iPad Pro. This, uh, only the iPad Pro 12 inch as of this time has USB 3. And I think that USB 3 is needed for this to work. Even though this is a USB 2 interface using the USB Audio 2 uh, class compliant um, thing, I think that the, the ports on, on the smaller iPads are using USB 2, but I think the, the bandwidth is a bit crippled. Now this has a much, much higher bandwidth uh, and also room for much more going on with the uh, USB 3. So I'm gonna plug this in and also I could power it at the same time. And I'm gonna plug it in here. So this does not work with the older uh, input cable, the USB 2 cable. I've tried it, it doesn't work. Uh, so only with the new USB 3 cable. Uh, no complaints so far, no? Still, yeah, it could still mix. Let's try something. I'm gonna open up an FM synthesizer, FM4 by Primal Audio. So right now I'm using uh, this audio interface to play. Uh, it's just for output right now. So I'm gonna... Yeah, so for output, it works. I have to be honest, right now, there are being reports of it not being 100% stable on the iPad Pro. And I've noticed that a few times I had to restart apps uh, and in order to make it um, recognize the interface. And then suddenly it works. And I haven't used it a lot, but I've used it enough to, to understand that it actually works. So of course they're working on things and to improve the drivers and all that so let's try something else for recording let's try apple's very own garage band and make a new song create a new song and i'm going to use the audio recorder to see audio device detect connected you have plugged in an electric guitar or a microphone in order to hear yourself while you play turn on monitor i don't want to turn on monitor because we, we already hear the sound in, in this, yeah? So I'm gonna cancel. And, and then check this out. So with the audio recorder, I could select on this little cable symbol here, which inputs you want to record on. And I could access all of the channels. This is truly a multi-channel interface for the iPad Pro. So input seven and eight, this is where the continuum is currently. And I don't know if I could record on several tracks at once. Uh, I could try it. Let's see what happens. That's another one. Uh, so this one will have to record the effect uh, three, which is the delay. I don't know. Uh, OK, 
Okay. I could. Okay, let's let's do this first. Um, rename. Um, continuum. And the second one. Rename. Effect. Ah. Delay. I could record enable both of them at the same time. So potentially I could probably record both of them. Uh, I hope. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Yeah, it says two up there. So there you go. It works on the iPad. Isn't that sweet? It works on the iPad Pro. This is the first time I've tried a, a true multi, um, multi-track multi sound interface on the iPad. I tried different different audio interfaces before on the iPad, on the older iPad and on the iPhone, but they all, you know, mixed down to stereo. So this is the first one that I've tried that actually is a true multi-track sound interface. It's very, very interesting. So there's a K-Mix, a true multi-track uh, interface, works on the Mac and soon on Windows and also on the iPad uh, straight out of the box, iPad Pro uh, with the USB 3 model. And it is early days for the firmware, but it does work very well uh, even, even though it's just been released. Uh, they're making updates to address certain issues and they, it's on the very top of the list for them to, to make it as smooth as possible for all the users. Thank you for taking your time to, to watch this. I hope you got some questions answered and I hope it was helpful and interesting for you. And for, for all, all of you who chose, who choose to support me over at Patreon, I'm so incredibly thankful because it's making it possible for me to pursue my dream of making more music related videos on YouTube uh, and making it all available uh, and helping out as many people as I can with the um, different tutorials and making inspirational jams and all of this is becoming more and more possible because of, of all the donations I get from people like you. So thank you so much for donating to me over at Patreon. That was quite difficult to, to type and, and, and talk at the same time, by the way. Patreon, yeah. So there is an info button up here somewhere. If you press it, uh, you, it'll take you to, to Patreon. And over there, you could uh, set up um, an, it's like an, a subscription-based uh, crowdfunding platform. You could set up the, how much you want to donate and if you don't want to donate, uh, you can still watch all my content for free uh, on YouTube. But if you do, uh, if you if you do help me out with a, a a couple of dollars here and there, it helps me tremendously to stay on top of things and to to spend more time uh, doing more and more interesting videos. So, um, and also it helps me to pay the rent and to buy food and stuff for my family yeah so but uh, and also the ones of you who do choose to uh, support me you also get access to my downloadable sample packs and to my um, to my patch libraries that I make occasionally and re release so um, all of you who support me on patreon you get access to all of that yeah now oh, check this. Yeah, he's, he's a bit tired now. Yeah. So I'm just gonna chill out with this. <laughs> this is horrible. This is a horrible drawing. 
well, drawing and talking at the same time suddenly didn't work out really well. So maybe I'll just shut up now. I've been talking far too much. Okay, K-Mix, very good. I hope this was helpful for uh, for you. And if, if there is any comments uh, or any uh, questions, uh, don't be afraid to ask. I try to to uh, answer as many of the comments as I can and uh, if if you're supporting me on Patreon I'm going to you first because that's, that's how it works you support me I try to support you back but uh, over at you know my Facebook page I respond to messages over at um, right here on YouTube I respond to as many comments as I can so please comment and don't be afraid to ask stupid questions and I'm here to help and uh, yeah that's what I do play music and help people understand this stuff so there you go this is Cuckoo thank you all for watching and see you soon I hope don't be afraid to ask questions being a fool is perfectly fine you know and yeah peace out